Good afternoon to all. Welcome to the Talks Tent at Sea Focus 2020, where we're at day three of our Sea Spotlight Talk series. This is our first talk for the day, Southeast Asia through a global lens. And before I hand the time over to the panel, please allow me to introduce you to our speakers for today. First, on our left, we have Mami Kataoka, who serves as the director for the Mori Art Museum in Tokyo, as well as president of the International Committee for Museums and Collections of Modern Art and professor at Kyoto University of Art and Design in the Graduate School of Art and Design Studies. And next to her, we have Ruben Kihan, curator of contemporary Asian art at Queensland Art Gallery, Gallery of Modern Art in Australia, where he has been a curator for the 2018, 2015, and 2012 editions of the Asia Pacific Triennial of Contemporary Art. And next to him is Billy Tang, senior curator of the Rockban Art Museum in Shanghai. Joining the museum in spring 2018, he recently co-curated with director Laris Frogier the first institutional solo exhibition in China for the German conceptual artist Tobias Reberger. Finally, on the right, we have our panel moderator, Michelle Lim, a writer and curator based in New York and Singapore. She holds a PhD in art history from Princeton University and was a curatorial fellow in the Whitney Independent Study Program. She is also the assistant professor at the School of Art, Design and Media in the National Technological University in Singapore. Please join me in welcoming the panelists for today. Hi, uh, good afternoon to everyone. Um, I think we're very privileged and honored to be here uh, today. And uh, thank you very much, Audrey, for inviting us and uh, Rachel for helping a lot with the coordination. Um, so actually, I feel that the three panelists need very little introduction of, to most of the audience here. Um, so I have spoken very briefly to them, but I would say that uh, they are very, very familiar with art in Southeast Asia and they know many of the contemporary Southeast Asian artists uh, personally as well and have worked closely with them. So uh, today's panel um, is a huge topic actually. It looks at what is Southeast Asia through a global lens and I think uh, what is Southeast Asia is a question that is continuously being debated even for those of us in Southeast Asia. Um, so, but yet I think that um, the history of art in Southeast Asia is one of multiple narratives and many of these narratives do not necessarily come from within. I think narratives from uh, what we might consider outside or in a transnational uh, arena are really important and feed into uh, our understanding of what might be a dominant narrative in history. So just to get things started for uh, the everyone, I have asked our speakers to maybe do a very short presentation of uh, some of the projects that are close to their hearts and then we can take it from there. Okay, uh, if uh, Mami, if you would go first. Hello everyone, thank you for having me here. Um, my uh, biggest engagement with Southeast Asia would be this exhibition called The Sun Shower. We did uh, the Mori Art Museum co-organized with the National Art Center and uh, Japan Foundation in 2017. And besides that, the Mori Museum, since its opening in 2003, we showed a few <coughs> very important artists from Southeast Asia, such as we did a major retrospective of Dinkule, and uh, we did a project with uh, Robert Chabet. So in a different format, we had been introducing uh, uh, art from Southeast Asia. But particularly Sun Shower was a uh, major exhibition that uh, uh, we have 1,500 square meters, and National Art Center has 2,000 square meters. So it became, like I don't say Biennale scale, but quite a large scale introduction of the uh, Southeast Asian art. And uh, it was commemoration of uh, ASEAN, 50 years of ASEAN. So uh, we only included <coughs> 10 countries that belongs to ASEAN member. 
and uh, 86 artists and groups, and we showed 190 works. But uh, something sig significant about this project for me was we visited uh, 10 countries and 16 cities. And we counted all the appointments, the meeting that we did over two and a half years. So that added up like uh, four, over 400. So uh, it was a great experience for me to actually visit different places, particularly not only uh, capital city of each country, but also different capital for uh, contemporary art. And uh, like seeing Ilan in Sabah was a very different experience from um, visiting uh, KL. So these kind of differences that by visiting different cities, we learn so much over um, um, two and a half years. But also we worked with uh, 14 curators. So it was more like a curatorial project. Um, <coughs> four curators from National Art Center and uh, I asked all my curators from the uh, Moriad Museum to be somehow involved. So uh, each of the curator took uh, countries in charge. So uh, I went all the, all the uh, countries and uh, Naoki Yoneda from National Art Center also went to all the countries. But other countries we made a different team and uh, particularly we invited four independent curators from Southeast Asia. Uh, <coughs> Ma Bespina from Philippines, Onjolin from Malaysia, Grace Sambo from Indonesia, and Vera May from S Singapore at the time. Now she's in London. But it was also a very interesting exchange because these younger curators were key for us to learn or become kind of like a connecting point with the younger generation of the different region. At, uh, as an exchange, we could probably have provided how larger institution works to spend uh, three years to produce one exhibition. So that was a very interesting um, curatorial project. And uh, <coughs> we tried to be as democratic as possible. So uh, we were discussing so many times and who, who to be chosen and which work. And uh, I think uh, it was very interesting discussion process that we learned each other. So uh, something more important, I'm only showing these images from uh, this exhibition as an out outcome, but something that we learn so much is the really <coughs> from this research process and uh, building these um, networks among curators and also the artists. And we also continue to work with some of the artists that we showed in, uh, in this exhibition. For instance, uh, Mori, as uh, um, Mori Building is a parent company. So we commissioned the Sophia Pitch to make some uh, large works for the public art, for the corporate, uh, like a public space. So uh, this continuation from this uh, basic research still make a lot of uh, sense for us. But also the problem or issue is, how do you continue this, how do you update? Because, uh, because of this project, normally museum has special budget when there is an ex exhibition. So uh, we uh, go places according to this exhibition program. So when we do have this major show, we could have spent so much time spending all these places in Southeast Asia. But after this is done, we still have some uh, saved uh, connections and information. But uh, how to uh, renew or um, continue this uh, relationship is my biggest issue in the future. And, uh, but something also that's good out of these is we collected quite a few works during our research. So uh, now we have probably some 80 to, 80 to 90 works from Southeast Asia. And uh, now uh, all our collection is uh, on website. So you can go to our web website and see the collection part. Then uh, you can look at the names. So uh, I was very happy to be able to start collecting more from this region. But again, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's our issue how to continue collecting too. So uh, yeah, I think um, this is uh, good for me for now and to continue discussing.
Thank you, Mami. Um, I think that's a great start, and we can continue some of the questions you brought up. Um, I think about uh, both collecting and also about audiences. I think that uh, we can definitely talk more about that. Um, Ruben, can I hand the mic over to you, Ram? Yeah, so uh, I work at the, uh, the Queensland Art Gallery and Gallery of Modern Art in Brisbane. Uh, where I'm principally responsible for uh, working with that gallery's collection of contemporary Asian art and, uh, and researching and organizing the, uh, uh, that relevant components for the Asia-Pacific Triennial. Uh, so I guess what I'm uh, talking about really predates me, in a way, or my presence there. Um, the APT began, uh, its first edition was way back in 1993, and uh, I started working on the project in 2011, so I'm a, a relative latecomer. Uh, uh, I was uh, already working with, uh, with artists from Southeast Asia um, before I joined the gallery. I was working at a, a space called Art Space in Sydney, uh, which combines uh, residency uh, exhibitions and um, public programs and publishing functions. And so we were quite regularly in dialogue uh, with uh, with artists and uh, with professionals from from this part of uh, this part of Asia, uh, but um, on joining the uh, the APT, um, I had the opportunity to uh, start working with this quite extraordinary history. Now, um, APT, I guess, suppose it roughly coincides with my adult life. Uh, I saw the very first. Uh, APT exhibition and was really struck by um, the possibilities that it that it suggested for an understanding of what art uh, was, what it could be, uh, particularly for Australia, which is um, a country that up until that point had really considered itself to be uh, a kind of um, outpost, uh, colonial outpost of uh, of Europe, and uh, the APT emerged at a point where. The uh, first of all, um, Aboriginal art was being uh, taken seriously as as contemporary art within Australia. It was starting to be shown in museums, starting to be collected, uh, and uh, and at, at that time, uh, the gallery started looking very seriously at Asian art. Now, Southeast Asia played a very very important role uh, in those very early APTs. And in fact, the first APT, half of the artists uh, came from. Uh, from Southeast Asia, uh, which is a very, very interesting statistic. And indeed, through the 1980s, there had been a lot of uh, really artist-driven exchange um, between Australia and Southeast Asia. So um, I suppose I should say that uh, uh, APT, a lot of people consider it to be quite pioneering. I don't think that's the best term. I think what it did is it consolidated a lot of existing research and exchange that was happening. There was already um, a lot of expertise among artists and other professionals within the country. Um, and uh, what the APT did was, was institute a very interesting curatorial structure at that point where um, they worked with advisors and later co-curators uh, from throughout Southeast Asia and very, very eminent, very, very senior people. Uh, TK Sabapati, uh, Jim Supangat, um, Alice Guillermo. Uh, these kind of people were involved in the authorship of those first th few editions. Um, the representation of, uh, of art from Southeast Asia has obviously changed during that period, as has the uh, uh, certain understandings of what Southeast Asia is. Um, so the most uh, striking change, of course, is the, um, uh, the, a greater multiplicity, um, perhaps, the emergence of uh, uh, very exciting art scene centers, art scenes in places like Vietnam, Cambodia, Myanmar, Laos. Um, and uh, more recently, uh, the, uh, the real significance of um, indigenous cultures um, throughout the region has started to be acknowledged. And what I think that's um, done for the perspective of us as an organization, as something that I see a bit more broadly, is a kind of a, a troubling of this uh, very static idea of what Southeast Asia is. Um, it's often, Southeast Asia is often spoken about in these very kind of post-colonial Cold War, war terms, um, fixed around a number of nation states. Uh, but 
uh, starting to uh, represent, I suppose, a much more uh, broader uh, range of communities, of understandings of, of society, some of which are um, pre-colonial regionalities. Um, we might uh, talk about Nusantara, for example, uh, and others being much more post-colonial. Um, these different uh, shifting conceptions that don't necessarily cohere with um, this idea of ASEAN, this sort of uh, association of nation states. Um, and looking at other dialogues as well, uh, dialogues between um, Macassan traders and uh, Aboriginal people in Northern Australia that predate European colonization. Uh, looking at Austronesian dialogues through uh, Taiwan and the Philippines, um, and even inclining towards the Pacific uh, through Papua New Guinea, the Solomon Islands, um, and opening up a range of, uh, of much more uh, interesting potential dialogues. And so um, this, I suppose this last image here is um, an interesting um, a composition of, uh, of artists, um, only one of whom is really strictly from Southeast Asia, that's uh, Jerome Manjat from uh, Pangrok Sulap in the middle. Um, but he's surrounded by uh, speakers from the, uh, an Australian South Sea Islander, um, from the Marshall Islands, um, uh, Tongan Australian, and also uh, that's uh, speaking there is Maoish Kawa from Okinawa on the right, which of course has um, uh, quite extensive historical links um, with Javanese and, and Malayan traders. Uh, so I think there is a, there is a potential for a, a kind of an opening up that we're exploring uh, of this concept of Southeast Asian and a real um, enrichment of the diversity of practices that we represent. Thank you. Hello. Thank you very much, Ruben. Um, that was a really short but uh, really comprehensive uh, touching on a lot of the topics and also several important points in the history of thinking about Southeast Asian art. I think in particular, I mean, whether we think about, for me personally, the idea of Southeast Asia as a construct is often a very geopolitical one. And uh, in some ways, I think we are dealing with uh, what we've inherited from the ASEAN exhibitions of uh, decades past. And uh, how, does, uh, curate, how do curators today uh, incorporate some of this historical, uh, I don't want to say baggage, but almost also a little bit of responsibility into this? I think that's something that seems to surface quite a bit, I would say, in um, the curatorial writings of late. Um, maybe let me pass it over to Billy for now, and then we can come back to some of the points. Okay, uh, thank you for the invitation of Steve Focus. Uh, my name is Billy Tang. Uh, so uh, the rock bands, uh, I wanted to share a bit about the, the history and maybe conditions that we're working with, maybe as a way to highlight some of the challenges um, uh, for, from the perspective of working in Shanghai. So the, the rock band is, uh, is, is, we're actually considered in China um, a very established um, museum, and, but yet we're only 10 years old. So there's this kind of contradiction of being, um, you know, very a short period of time. And I think that's symptomatic of um, sort of the acceleration of, of museums that has happened in the region. Uh, but there are also like, a lot of blind spots. Uh, for example, there is still uh, um, less uh, collections. Uh, so, so we're a non, uh, we're an institution not affiliated with a collection. Um, and in the city of Shanghai, there isn't really a, an institution um, uh, that is uh, sort of systematically collecting contemporary art. So, in in a sense, we have to address uh, sort of evolve our model to address these kind of blind spots. Um, and then the history is that we're in a building that was uh, in the 1930s. Um, it's, uh, it was originally the Royal Asia Society. Um, and uh, so this was, it has a uh, history with uh, uh, colonization. Uh, it was uh, run by the British. Uh, so you can see in these images, uh, there's a lot of, um, it was a very particular sort of uh, model of exhibitions. Um, and then sort of after the Civil War, uh, uh, the British left and um, 
so this, this building has had many different lives. Um, it, in fact, became a commune at one point. Um, and, and then now we're a contemporary art museum. Uh, so we kind of operate more like a constala, so uh, we focus on solo exhibitions primarily. So that's since the beginning, this has been the focus. Uh, so we have about six floors and it's, it's very much about uh, challenging the formats of how to experience um, uh, the exhibition and breaking formats. Um, uh, <clears throat> and then I think uh, through the years, we're also trying to um, expand a dialogue with the region, uh, so including Southeast Asia. And because of the, the kind of the, the relatively short period of time that we have as an institution, uh, one of the strategies that we have is to, uh, to collaborate with other institutions. So beginning of last year was the first time we did a group exhibition, for example. Uh, with Parasite, which is uh, one of the oldest um, artist-run uh, non-profit institutions uh, in Asia. And uh, so this is really a kind of way of for us to learn as a curatorial team as well. Uh, and this is something that we hope to, um, yeah, to, to broaden our network and exchanges uh, beyond sort of the economy of exhibition making. Uh, so, in, also to, con to continue this as well, is that we're involved with the Hugo Boss uh, Asia Award, uh, which began in 2013. <laughs> yeah. And uh, there is also another, um, the difference between the award in Guggenheim, for example, is we're very much focused uh, not just to have a solo show with one artist, it's, it's a group show and the focus is on emerging artists uh, aged under 35. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I thought I wanted to also want to share this quote with everyone, which is also uh, an interesting dilemma and challenge. Uh, so. Uh, Rashid Aaron, Asia is always a matter of imagining, and then as art workers, uh, it makes it our business. Uh, the concept of Asia is too vague to use and too big to fail. Um, and another quote is, <laughs> so, so, so in a way, it's, it's interesting to, um, for me to think about how to think about specificity in this matter. Uh, there is this kind of politics of speaking for the other, and uh, how do we sort of maintain this idea of specificity and, and difference? So I wanted to give you a breakdown of sort of in the, how we also, this kind of question is, relates to how we reflect on the format of the award and how that sort of evolved. So in 2013, for example, uh, it was an exhibition where we um, had gave a platform for eight artists, and um, the process is that we have uh, a large uh, jury member who also do the nomination in the, in the past. Uh, to, and they, they represent lots of different figures in the, uh, in the region, uh, contributing in different ways the, to the ecology. So not just curators, but also writers, uh, different age groups. Uh, so, so it's re also reflecting the kind of diversity of the region. Um, and then somehow uh, we've also in a way, like how to maintain the idea of specificity and difference again, is uh, we decided, you know, it's, it's an interesting question of how do we balance interests and, and expertise and levels of knowledge and to really reflect the diversity. So I wanted to show the contrast here is where, where we separated the, the format with jury, uh, separate jury members and nominators. So in a way, they're sort of engaging in lots of different levels of depth. Um, to, to artists in the region. And it's also, for us, that's the kind of hidden aspects of the prize, uh, but something that's really the motivation for us is that um, it's really this continual conversation of uh, what are the conditions for an emerging artist, and through this as a byproduct, it's also a way to think about how do we support or how do we really change the infrastructure and, um, 
and work together as a network to build solidarity in the region. Uh, so I think that's something that's uh, an interesting common theme through a lot of the projects is this idea of perhaps there's this irreducibility between the gap of the local and the global, but how do we somehow circulate uh, opportunities and share resources and knowledge uh, in order to sort of uh, keep creating uh, new uh, conditions? So this is uh, uh, last year, um, the, the last iteration. So it's actually a biennial um, format. Um, so uh, it's now narrowed down to four, so it's much more focused. And um, maybe that was another aspect I wanted to talk about with our museum is the role of commissioning as well. Uh, so we're not affiliated with a collection. So the, really the kind of emphasis is on um, producing knowledge or structures and commissioning as well. So uh, through the conversation with these four artists, uh, we, we uh, try to support a new project, or in some cases, in order to challenge that format again, uh, with, the, with the situation of uh, how Jim Ban, for example, was um, you know, to give her another opportunity and resources to look back at a, a past project that had relevance uh, in Shanghai, uh, but then, um, to look at it in much more depth. So it's, it's also very interesting to think about the different rhythms of conversations and relationship building as well uh, to explore the, the region. Um, so this is uh, the, the jury members of last year. Um, so yeah, so go, this idea of uh, a very specific problem, I think, related to China is uh, there's also the language divide uh, and uh, also uh, uh, cultural in a sense um, that there is sometimes in a way, maybe this is also some, a question I would like to um, extend to, to, to other panelists, is this, sometimes there's this idea of the, uh, there's, there's a lot of political tension as well and this idea of um, the us and them, it's very hard sometimes to, to create an image of togetherness in that sense. Um, so actually, through the, the selection for this jury, um, for example, so I, I very deliberately, I think we were trying to select people that had had previous conversations with one another, um, but had also had worked in China as well to understand the complexities, but also the politics of, 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 of bringing uh, Southeast Asian artists or Asian artists uh, into this kind of exhibition, because ultimately it's also somehow an exhibition that becomes an outcome. Um, so this was also quite interesting for us. Um, and then actually the lessons of the Hugo Boss that um, uh, we have been sort of gathering knowledge and the network is manifest in a, a, a new research project that we have also launched uh, last year. Um, so this was uh, a collaboration with the curator Biliana Tirich. Uh, and it was focusing on a very formative moment uh, across uh, Southeast Asia and Asia uh, in the 90s. So it, we, we were very fascinated by, um, again, this idea of the whole region has had this kind of accelerationism, uh, this kind of uh, drive to sort of catch up in a way with the West. And this is in a way a condition that has caused a lot of amnesia because uh, a lot of things are forgotten about. Um, so you know we're 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 an institution that's engaged with exhibition making and sort of uh, and but somehow like uh, we're also trying to um, ch challenge that economy of the one-off exhibition, something that disappears afterwards, and trying to sustain uh, a, a longer commitment. Um, so, for example, uh, with this project there was a reading room that was a kind of constant growing bibliography uh, that was kind of grown in our conversations with the participants that we invited. Um, and this was something that the audience could sort of spend a long time to engage with. Uh, and then we uh, structured a series of uh, talks that were specifically uh, not just about um, the result of a research or a kind of show and tell, but it was really like something like similar to a masterclass. So it was about a process, something um, 
you know, also a way to share challenges. So, for example, uh, we worked with uh, Erin Gleason, who uh, had just discovered a film related to her research. So we screened parts of the film, and actually we had this conversation to unpack sort of how she was reading the film and understanding this, how this was related to her uh, research, um, and to show this and to kind of demystify the processes a, a little bit with our audience. Um, and then this all culminated into a two-day symposium. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is, I wanted to sort of, within a very short amount of time, illustrate the different rhythms of, of working and how to uh, sustain a dialogue in a place that's very um, politically contentious. Uh, there's a lot of gaps in knowledge and, um, in a way, like how to build solidarity so in order to sort of uh, have distance from the immediate uh, restraints that we have in our respective conditions. Thank you very much, Billy. Um, I think time really passes fast, right? I mean, 10 years since Rockburn uh, Museum uh, was started. And uh, this year just happens to be the 10th anniversary. So I think that's very exciting to look back. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is uh, I'm going to pose a question to each of our panelists and then I'm going to depart slightly from the usual question, traditional moderator, panelist Q&A format by asking our panelists to raise questions to each other. Um, if I am just go back to Mami's presentation and discussions and we've had a very recent conversation last week in Tokyo which goes to show how these conversations just continue uh, across different space and time. Um, sun, so sun showers is um, easily one of the most important um, exhibitions of contemporary Southeast Asian art, especially in Japan. Um, Having been in Japan the past few months, I also realized that the relationship between Japan and Southeast Asia has a long history, um, whether in terms of thinking about uh, Fukuoka Art Museum's early collecting, um, as well as more recently, the biennales and triennials of the region uh, that have taken place. Like for instance, I think uh, Ang Song Ming was showing in the Aichi by, uh, Art Festival recently, and I also uh, think Yu Lei was showing in Setochi Triennial. So I think there's uh, many, many connections and threads. So Mami, if I could ask you to speak a little bit about uh, Sun Showers, the reception, because I think we followed it since the beginning when you came to present uh, at Singapore Art Museum when you were going around the curatorial tour. So now I think it's a great time for us to ask, so how did the audience in Japan, or maybe more specifically in Tokyo and Fomori Art Museum, respond to the exhibition? And also, I think that um, we are, Mori Art Museum is also entering into a new phase. Uh, congratulations. Um, and I would like to hear very much about the question you left open-ended, which is where do we go from here? And how do you, whether you have specific things in mind for Mori Art Museum, thinking about Southeast Asian art or artists? Um, actually, the exhibition was very well received. And uh, <coughs> There have been quite a few number of South, so-called Southeast Asian exhibition in Japan. One was in 92 and then 97. So Sanshawa in 2017 was the first in 20 years. So it wasn't uh, like discussed in the framework of Southeast Asian art for quite a long time. But uh, so that means uh, younger, most of our audience is very young, probably uh, 90% of our audience is under 40 years old. So, uh, so it's very young audience, meaning that if last Southeast Asian show at the MOT was 97, probably nobody has seen it. So there's a complete blank of the knowledge development. So uh, the exhibition was received, we had more than 1,000 media coverage and a lot of people talked about, and we had uh, more people than we expected. 
And, but a lot of people said, ah, Southeast Asian art is very politically engaged. Because it comes from the understanding that they, they want to come and simply visually enjoy the art and was wanted to take pictures and upload. But uh, to me, contemporary art is really a reflection of history, politics, and society. So uh, I kept saying that you have to understand what kind of a history and uh, a society had been there in Southeast Asia, particularly post-war time, which had been reflected in most of the artworks. So it was a very good opportunity for the museum to talk about what contemporary art means now, particularly after the 90s. But the uh, uh, issue that was left to me is uh, the big question about like a definition of Southeast Asia. Is it relevant to look at uh, contemporary art within this framework of Southeast Asia, even ASEAN? Because definition of ASEAN, of course, changed. It started as a political alliance when it started against uh, uh, socialism. So uh, gradually, by Vietnam uh, joining and all this Cambodia and other countries joining, it now forms as an economic alliance now. And uh, so it's the meaning of ASEAN is completely changed now in, uh, in the last 50 years. But also, uh, each of these countries had a, such a different history. So uh, I had a difficulty to bind and see what is in common throughout these 10 nations. And uh, so it seems to be more relevant to look at uh, maybe Singapore together with India, is this uh, uh, UK legacy, and uh, some of the connection with uh, Vietnam and Laos through a uh, French perspective. The, all these uh, different perspectives, and even how Chinese culture had been embedded in the different parts of the ASEAN. We were discussing during the research that maybe we can do China show uh, uh, about all these uh, Southeast Asian land. So uh, I think uh, it's probably interesting to liberate a little bit uh, to the, the perspective of seeing uh, art from this region as a Southeast Asia, which is political boundaries, geopolitical boundary, and uh, seeing parts of the Southeast Asia in uh, different ways. And as uh, I, I totally echo with what uh, Ruben said, to try to start connecting with uh, part of the Pacific, part of the Oceania, and also maybe with uh, Taiwan. And uh, I think that will bring more interesting stories. And uh, to take that experience as a part of the reason that um, as a new vision that our Mori Art Museum has. The Mori has been saying that we really wanted to be an international museum but focusing on Asia. But I expanded slightly to say being an international museum but I wanted to focus on uh, Asia and the Pacific. So I wanted to look at uh, Asia or position of Japan in a larger sense by saying Pacific, then we could look at uh, 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 United States, particularly the uh, West Coast, where a lot of uh, migrated uh, Asians are still having uh, communities. And uh, of course, my uh, experience in Sydney also enriched my understanding of how much, how many Asians uh, being in the residence of uh, Australia and then also the connection with New Zealand. So it's starting to break these uh, uh, usual boundaries of these uh, geopolitical countries bounding, binding, I think it would uh, give us more interesting perspectives on the region and art. Thank you, Mami. Um, I think that uh, that's uh, Asia Pacific is probably a good word for me to move on to my question to Ruben. Um, as Mami pointed out, I mean, I almost feel that for today's panel, I have to bracket the word Southeast Asia and move on to some specific questions. If not, it's kind of hard. We can circle around this for many days, actually. Um, something I've been thinking about, maybe just to bring it a bit closer to home, uh, has to do with... Uh, maybe let me zoom in specifically on Singapore and our own art history. And I think there were some years uh, in the 90s when certain forms of art uh, uh, was uh, difficult to show in Singapore. And I think that's where uh, countries like 
Australia, Japan, and uh, to some extent as well parts of Europe and North America played a really important role in supporting the practices, uh, especially of uh, the performing artists. Um, so Ruben, in a way you have a really good view uh, being in the APT and I would I, I just wonder if you could speak to how whether these considerations were part of it. What I mean is that looking at art that could not be perhaps shown in um, certain countries and maybe to some extent taking on a certain kind of responsibility, a kind of global or communal responsibility to open up these opportunities and whether um, as you said, over the years, even our idea of what is ASEAN or Southeast Asia has changed significantly. Whether this um, responsibility or relationship, um, yeah, if you could speak a bit about that. Uh, sure. Um, I, I guess to start with um, your point about Singapore, I think that's exactly right. Um, and I know that there's actually quite a lot of research at the moment going on into the way that um, performance operated outside Singapore when there was a, a de facto ban on it. Um, and that there were some quite extraordinary and very memorable uh, performances that, uh, that took place um, uh, at the APT, but, um, but more broadly, um, I've been digging through archives in Fukuoka of uh, uh, performances that took place in Japan um, not just at the Asian Art Show, but at uh, other little one-offs, the uh, Hiroshima uh, exhibition for the Asian Games in 1994, um, and uh, a number of these other venues where artists were able to circulate. And look, that's one of the possibilities that this interconnected international um, art world, for want of a better term, uh, allows is uh, the capacity to realize works that may not be achievable um, in an artist's home. Uh, and it's, it's been an ongoing thing and when we certainly noted in the last APT, even this, though this wasn't intentional, that there were quite a few works um, by artists, not just from Southeast Asia but, but more, more broadly, uh, that certainly would have some difficulty and being shown. So even where an, uh, an outright ban doesn't actually exist or where there's no state or uh, police pressure, that there are other forms of uh, uh, pressure that would make the selection of a work or its exhibition very problematic. And there were quite a few works that had actually, you know, been taken down um, for one reason or another um, that, that appeared. But at, at, at the same time, I'm... Um, I'm quite cautious to kind of present Australia as this sort of liberal democratic paradise because we have our own problems um, and uh, some, some, some quite um, terrible problems, of course, uh, are, are uh, at the risk of, of appearing too political, um, our um, national attitude towards climate change, which has resulted in the, in the current um, fire catastrophe with... 10 billion uh, hectares of, uh, of forest burnt, 1 billion animals dead, uh, you know, 2,000 homes lost, 20 lives lost. Um, you know, it's an absolute tragedy. And our uh, disgraceful um, immigration and refugee policy. Um, apologies to anybody from Australian embassies or consulates here. Um, but uh, that is a personal opinion, not an institutional one. Um, but uh, these, uh, this is one of the, the places, I mean, you, you mentioned the word solidarity, Billy. Um, and uh, it, it, even though um, these B exhibitions can slip into spectacle, they can slip into forms of cultural tourism, they can operate along uh, lines that are really formed on diplomatic, trade or economic imperatives, um, that they do actually offer platforms for new solidarities to be created independently even of the institutional structures that we work within. And I think this is um, perhaps one of the most interesting things as we look back over this history of exhibitions and particularly of these, uh, these international platforms within uh, the Asia Pacific is looking at the artist contacts um, 
the, uh, the, the contacts were enabled through these exhibitions, or the fact that many of these exhibitions came into place through a history of artistic exchanges that already operated outside of the purview of states, outside of institutions, outside of corporations, um, and uh, enabled a level of artistic freedom. So it's, and I think it has, sure it has something to do with the host context, the host nation, but I think it's uh, um, a broader spirit of enabling these solidarities and exchanges, the sharing of knowledge in common uh, to form and to tactically enable practices that wouldn't be able to take place out elsewhere. Thank you, Ruben. Um, so I uh, believe I could move on to the next question for you. Um, it struck me that Rockburn Art Museum has a, has a very different structure and also approach to exhibition making in a way. There is a bit of a lightness of being that comes with not having a permanent collection. And I think that a number, several Singaporean artists have done solo exhibitions uh, at Rockburn. Um, I wonder if you could speak a little bit about uh, how your approach might be different and how do you choose maybe specific artists and whether you even think about the issue of Southeast Asia in working with specific artists, if I might uh, start with this question. Mm. Um, yeah, just we're, we're also quite a small um, team. So we're, uh, actually our exhibition team is three people. So there's, we're often very overwhelmed with the, the urgent kind of questions that we have to face. Um, so we structure the, our program by um, three exhibitions. Uh, they can be either solo or, or group uh, exhibition. And so the group exhibitions, we very specifically uh, try to use this as a platform to extend to a, a dialogue with uh, an institution in the region in Asia uh, so in order in a way, it's to grow expertise together, um, because of the, um, also to, uh, in a way, tr challenge this idea of the possibility of the model of uh, exhibition in an institution, and it's a way to share pragmatics, so through the constraints and challenges that we face. So, for example, in China, we uh, have to deal with censorship, uh, and this kind of issue uh, of, of what is visible and possible um, has another kind of uh, interest in, uh, gives you another perspective to, uh, and also for another institution uh, to invite them together and it enables us to maybe rethink that kind of question uh, and to see if there's another way to circumnavigate. Um, and now we also, well, it's also a, a system that's very young uh, and infrastructure is also very young. Um, we were to a point where previously uh, it was very important to just to simply the gesture to take uh, or to invite uh, a practice from outside of China into, uh, uh, into this context to, to really push the discourse as well uh, and knowledge in the region, um, in, the, in the country. Um, but now that we're in a, a situation where there are now uh, a museum boom where lots of institutions are doing this and it's become slightly a competitive situation. Um, again, this is why I talk about solidarity as well uh, with one another and, and in, a, in, in a way to placate that idea of this race to, to show how many artists we can show and different artists. It's really trying to think about the, the, the structure as well, uh, how we can sort of um, find new rhythms uh, beyond the exhibition economy. Um, uh, so this is why also we, we have this biannual award with, in collaboration with Hugo Boss, uh, but this research platform as well. So uh, it was last year the focus was on exhibition history and so it was trying to in a way uh, cultivate this practice of archiving our own histories and to uh, to share these uh, resources um, directly with the audience and, and, in, and the process of in the making as well. Um, this year it's about institution building and uh, again, which, thinking about different rhythms, uh, we're inviting on uh, short-term residencies uh, 
colleagues from across the region. So actually we invited uh, NTU CCA, uh, Magda from Ed, uh, who's in charge with the education. Um, so also think about, so we had a series of workshops where we're thinking about pragmatics, so similar situations where we have similar constraints and, and, and how to sort of find new spaces. So I mean, her, her practice is very uh, renowned for thinking about the curatorial beyond exhibitions and this was something that we wanted to exchange with. So yeah, this is something yeah, that was, is ongoing in a sense. Yeah. Thank you, Billy. Mami, did you want Can to I ask? ask? Ruben something? Yes, of course. <laughs> I was interested in um, uh, this APT model, which started already in 93, but developing this, um, or accumulating the exhibition experience, the meaning that will give a great number of audience who could experience the art from the uh, same region every three years. And uh, my question is, because uh, you asked me about the reception of the audience, uh, because when you read or when you try to understand fully the works from Southeast Asia, you have to uh, also understand or you would like to know more about uh, society, history, and this particular incident, and uh, what kind of a colonial legacy. But it's all different stories. So uh, you go into this a different um, storytelling of the history, which I really enjoyed, but it takes time. So uh, people read, like look at the work, but also try to understand the context through this label, and <laughs> it's very different from the, the work from the next one. So uh, I was wondering, by doing APT over 25 years, if you see some changes or a sort of development of the knowledge, among your community? Uh, look, I, I do. Um, and I hope that the growth of knowledge, in fact, I, I think I'm confident that the growth of knowledge um, in part has to do with the programs um, at, the, at the museum. Um, the, uh, I think particularly in Brisbane where the exhibition is situated, um, when we make these exhibitions, there is always the kind of opening weekend uh, when you sort of have these international art professionals going through. It becomes very easy to kind of focus on that uh, as a kind of an audience for uh, biennials and triennials. But actually, the local audience is the, it's the audience you make an exhibition for. I was having this conversation yesterday um, about the um, duration you should expect an audience uh, to enjoy an exhibition for. Um, and, you know, typically I tried when I'm making a normal sized exhibition, uh, make it so that people can experience the exhibition in, in an hour and a half. That's roughly the length of a feature film or a football match. Um, and I think that's, you know, that's, we push it a bit further as art professionals. We've, we've got stamina, we're trained. But um, your, your audience should be able to digest it. So the question then is like, how do you construct a large scale exhibition which has like 80 to 100 artists in it? Uh, and, and it's the, the, the you're, you're making an, uh, these exhibitions for the local audience. Um, and what you have to do is make them want to come back. Um, you know, construct it in maybe digestible chunks or uh, forms of experience they can find their own ways through. And uh, so, so this, is, this is the first thing. So always thinking about providing context. Now that's hard within a big exhibition. Uh, on a wall panel, we normally have about 120 words to communicate uh, often some very, very um, uh, complicated histories or um, aesthetic strategies. Um, and uh, so what we try and do within that is obviously to give the audience the tools to unpack these things and provide other programs, educational programs, talks, etc., to really elaborate on them. Um, that's, that's one level, and you, you hope that it's accumulative. So every three years, the same people are coming, and they do. There is a core audience that does. At the same time, there's a broader social responsibility for, in Australia that we have for actually, uh, you know, uh, uh, providing an education system that um, enables a greater understanding of our immediate neighbourhood, as well as our own history. Um, be really surprised about um, the level of understanding of um, Aboriginal cultures. It's very, very variable 
within Australia between different social groups. So too for migrant cultures. 12.5% uh, of the Australian population identifies either as Asian or as Asian Australian. And um, uh, how, how much of that, uh, that uh, these kind of complicated histories are understood um, by the community? It is not just the museum's task. We can take that on, but it needs to be a broader social task. Now, over the run of the APT, we've seen a range of shifts in education policy um, as it's applied, first of all, to multiculturalism and to social studies education and geography. Now, when I was in high school, a very long time ago, um, uh, the, uh, the two countries that we learned about in the first year of year eight geography were Indonesia and India. Um, we did uh, basic Bahasa. Um, Bahasa was one of the major language subjects available at the universities. Now, in that time period, University of Queensland no longer has a Bahasa Indonesia department. Um, so you have a generation of Australians uh, who are sort of uh, 50 and above who's, who have very good knowledge of Bahasa, have lived and uh, worked in Indonesia, um, and then uh, this, this big gap. Um, uh, interestingly enough, uh, uh, I mean, uh, I think particularly with the sort of tensions between the US and China, our biggest trading partner and our you know, traditional military ally, um, there's, uh, there's a lot of talk of looking for new partners uh, in Indonesia, of course, um, among other uh, Southeast Asian uh, nations in our neighbourhood has kind of become one that uh, our government certainly be having a lot more uh, discussion with. And uh, it's interesting to sort of see the kick on in, uh, in the rest of society. So uh, we're actually starting to see dedicated Southeast Asian exhibitions at major institutions outside my institution. So very, for a very long time, there wasn't a lot happening. Um, smaller, like places like Gallery 4A, uh, you know, private initiatives like the Sherman Foundation, um, were all um, you know, producing excellent uh, exhibitions, but um, the museums were kind of letting the side down a little bit. Uh, last year, the National Gallery of Australia staged a very successful um, uh, exhibition, you know, profiling um, contemporary art in Indonesia from the 1980s. And uh, I think uh, one of the things that I noticed was that suddenly there's this, there's this curiosity of young curators. So uh, I was recently asked to um, be one of the judges for a travelling scholarship for young curators. And reading through the applications, I was struck by the number of them were like, okay, I've done this project working with artists in Sydney and Melbourne, and now I want to go to Indonesia. Like, there was almost like there was kind of no rationale, uh, but this sudden kind of excitement uh, that that's when it, where they wanted to go. So my hope is, is that um, this expertise, not just with Indonesia, but with all of our neighbours, will return um, and that will take a little bit of the pressure off us and mean that our wall labels can maybe go into the individual artistic strategies uh, rather than these kind of locational histories, a little bit. Thank you, Ruben. Yeah, I, I do find that um, I think we live in a challenging time, not just for exhibition making, but also uh, for exhibition visiting. Because now it's so much easier to travel from country to country. And uh, it's very exciting to have more exhibitions of Southeast Asian art. But I think also for the traveling visitor, uh, there's also a question of how it will be different when I go to see different exhibitions of Southeast Asian art or uh, certain familiar artist names in different countries. Uh, previously, you might imagine that if the countries were not side by side, the works would be radically different. But right now, I think that um, it's uh, not so much the case anymore, uh, for better or for worse, because I think there are times when you want to get deeper into the artist's practice and be able to spend more than the five seconds while you're looking at 80 works. Uh, but at other times, uh, I think it's also become quite challenging to get deep in your artist's practice, even though you see a lot of it in different countries, I, I would say. Um, I think Billy had a question. Um, <coughs> Um, yeah, I wanted to ask Mami, um, in terms of, we're talking a lot about uh, there's a huge accumulation of knowledge and experience through the process of exhibition making, 
And sometimes it's such a shame that when the exhibition closes. And then, so that I wanted to ask an open question of, um, is there a, any strategies in the way to, for, this, uh, for exhibitions to tour or how, do, how does it become sustained or man maintains a lot of the knowledge and, and information building? Yeah, yeah actually, San Shawa traveled to Fukuoka Asian Art Museum and uh, partly because we loaned quite a few works from that museum as well. And uh, as most of you know, uh, the Fukuoka Asian Art Museum uh, is diverted from Fukuoka City Museum, which was opened in 1979, which is one of the first museums who started to get engaged with the Asian art. And uh, so I was very conscious about the history of this exhibition making. And my essay for the catalog is more about, not, not about uh, Sanshawa itself, but more about the exhibition history of how uh, Asia or Southeast Asia has been articulated in uh, exhibition making in Japan. So uh, it was meaningful for us to bring a part of the exhibition to Fukuoka to, uh, to, uh, to show some of the extra works from their collection. So they changed, they re-edited a little bit. So it made it more relevant for their own context. And then afterwards, the show went to uh, Gaoshun Museum in Taiwan. And the position of Taiwan is also very, very interesting because there was one moment that they were, they could be part of ASEAN. And now it's not, but uh, when they started to talk about the idea of global south and where they belong, do they belong to China, or do they belong to East Asia or Southeast Asia, geographically it's a very interesting location. And then also layers of a different colonial legacy by Japan and China and these. Um, so uh, that was also meaningful for uh, Gaoshun Museum too, because also they have quite a lot of uh, immigrants from Southeast Asia working in Taiwan. So that was another context that uh, made another sense to bring that show. And uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was uh, we have this small room. Sometimes we do use that room for series called the MAM Research. And MAM Research is a small show, but very, very in-depth research-based exhibition. And it's more about the context rather than work itself. So uh, uh, a lot of timelines and information, and uh, we are a little bit behind on making a document or like a books out of the display, but uh, that came from exactly the, what you said about the idea of all these uh, regional introductory exhibition could have a few works from different countries, and uh, you try to understand like a bigger story. But I really wanted to also have another poll to look into singular artist practice in depth because it's also different ways of talking about uh, art making and the history of the region. So, uh, um, yeah, Robert Chabert was one of the artists that I showed a few years back and he worked as an artist but also a curator and a professor at the university, played such an important role to develop idea of a conceptual art in the Philippines and beyond. So uh, that's another way of uh, doing and uh, try to uh, deliver this knowledge by accumulated uh, small project. Thank you, Mami and Billy. Yes, Susanna, it's your turn. Yes, just in, in the interest of symmetry, I'm going to ask Billy a question. <laughs> um, um, uh, yeah, I'm really interested to know your thoughts on uh, the future for, uh, for engagement, artistic engagement between China and Southeast Asia. I mean, without saying I, Southeast I Asia. Things in the audience, actually, because I remember uh, an anecdote that you said about Ho, Ho Chi Minh Trail. So there's, it's, it's been a very complicated and kind of fumbling kind of. Uh, fumbling around kind of process where, for example, there's a lot of misunderstandings and uh, I mean, f for example, in this project, I think uh, it was, so this was an initiative by Long March, um, was to um, create a kind of peripatetic uh, kind of uh, structure. So rather than being placed in one site, it was in a way to elongate the exchange between uh, China and Vietnam through the, the Ho Chi Minh Trail. 
um, and it was also uh, supposed to be a vehicle for, for exchanges. But um, so this is why I'm also interested also uh, to throw the question back to you at a later point uh, about uh, sort of just this challenge of solidarity as well and uh, our own kind of uh, prejudices or blind spots. So um, the future of, uh, it's, it's really, or the prospects, um, uh, it's really about sort of really more contacts, I think, because still I feel in China we're very isolated. There's also maybe, I'm not sure if also in other countries in the region they have a similar complex, but still there's this ingrained kind of idea of the art world being centered in Europe and North uh, America. This is still the reference point. And for example, uh, our exhibitions as a statistic, uh, the Hugo Boss Award is actually our lowest attendance, attended uh, exhibition compared to our solo exhibitions with, with other artists. Uh, and there's also this huge popularity as well with a lot of our um, uh, other institutions in, the, in, in China to, to have these kind of very big um, uh, signature uh, sort of solo exhibitions. Um, so it's really a long process and it's very complicated and contested. Um, I think the key for, I mean, I think this, uh, so I'm thinking about different rhythms. So the research project that we have, because we only have three exhibitions, there's always a dilemma of, and this issue of representation, how do you sort of kind of deal with the complexity of such a vast region? Um, so to so, sort so have to slow a dialogue behind the scenes, we have been invited strategically, lots of different practitioners, um, to sort of have closed door, sort of internal workshops, and also sharing that with the public to sort of create this dynamic. Um, and so, yeah, my only answer is really that um, for us, it's really to become more self-reflexive and um, and to try to uh, create more platforms for just the simple encounter to occur that's less kind of perfunctory and kind of you know very like one day two days kind of this situation uh and to see where it goes um yeah thank you yeah um i think that was a slightly tricky question uh, <laughs> but uh also really interesting for for me as well i think uh because uh, we we obviously we not just do we have Southeast Asian artists showing in um, Japan, China, and Australia. We do have a lot of Chinese artists, Japanese artists, and also Australian artists showing in this part of the world increasingly. And um, I think something I've noticed of late is, uh, and I'm thinking about, is also the question of how art spaces like museums and galleries uh, become a space for some of the complicated social and political issues that um, are difficult to discuss in other forums. And I think that um, the China example is uh, particularly maybe sensitive for everyone. And it, it, I mean, I don't know how much you feel at liberty to go into this actually, okay. but <laughs> I don't want to put you on the spot. Yeah, so, um, may, I'm going to open the floor to the audience first, and then maybe we can come back for one last round of comments uh, following that. Um, well, maybe the panel has some time to think about some of the many things that were raised up, actually. Thank you. Um, thank you for being on the panel. Um, I, I know it's really annoying with uh, all the sounds at the beginning and the rain and everything. Um, sorry, just uh, if, uh, if you don't mind, would you quickly introduce yourself? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm Lili. Um, I, I live in Singapore. And uh, I know it's very annoying at the beginning with all the, the sounds from somewhere and then the rain and everything, but it's sort of a very good metaphor for Southeast Asian art, you know, that you, know, you can't hear past all that clutter. So I have a question about your last comment on complicated issue, and, uh, and I want to tie it to global lens. And this probably is, uh, is a question more for Mammy as a start. Um, uh, one of the, the trends in thinking today is actually about decolonizing. Uh, decolon it's, not, not a, it's not a new thought, 
Uh, it's been around a long time, but it's got great momentum today that we're trying to decolonize knowledge, we're trying to decolonize thinking and all that. And so if you're talking about complicated issues that the museum can get involved in, one that I could think of for Southeast Asia and Japan is this, this issue of World War II. And you know, you recently had a situation in Japan where the Comfort Woman sculpture was taken off. And so, you know, we've all been like, you know, either conquerors or conquered of, of colonialism. And, and I, I don't think the topic is finished yet on, on colonialism and on World War II for Southeast Asia. So, so in, from your perspective, Japan and Southeast Asia, I think it goes beyond just regrouping the countries. I think there's still some issues that need to come to the fore. Uh, and I think Europe has done probably a better job. The Germans have come out and said what they did. The Japanese have not. Um, is is my kind of my simple take, right? So, given that, what what do you see then as a possibility? Maybe not a sculpture of the Comfort Woman, not, nothing that raw. And you're taking state money, so the government's going to step in like this one. So, how do you how do you? How do you, as an institution, get through that? So, even with that, as a long history, that's one. But can you imagine Billy trying to do a critique on One Belt, One Road, which is a form of colonialism, but you're going you're gonna to get in trouble for that. So, how do you navigate through all this for Southeast Asia? Um, maybe let's uh, take the question. Uh, do you want to take the question first? Uh, okay, Mami, would you like to go first? Thank you for the question. It's a very, uh, very important question. I have to say that uh, uh, all this relationship with form of art and uh, creative uh, uh, force in relationship with the funding. And uh, so particularly when we do work with National Museum or uh, Japan Foundation, like a uh, fund from a foreign minister that becomes a sort of a, a political message or like a national statement. So uh, I am more or less in a slightly freer position as a privately funded museum and I'm trying to see how we could uh, talk about that um, colonial legacy including Japan within a larger Asia in uh, in a museum, museum context. Actually, we are holding this symposium in collaboration with the Tate in coming June. Uh, the topic is exactly the decol uh, decolonization. And we are looking at the topic of decolonization from Alexandria to Japan, because when we talk about the decolonization, it has been more or less like uh, UK and Singapore, or like all these uh, colonized uh, and colonized countries. But within these Asian nation, there had been still a lot of issues that we could talk about. So uh, there were actually quite a big uh, interest from the world, and we had uh, 130 some applications, and we just selected 15 of them. But uh, that includes uh, colonial legacy from uh, Soviet Union, Ottoman uh, Empire, and then also uh, Singapore could be a colonizer for other Southeast Asian countries. So all these very complicated issues that came out from these, uh, like reading through 138 applications. So including a, a relationship with Japan and rest of the Asia, but I think we need to start learning that history, because in my country, sadly, that part of the history hasn't really been s spoken or probably uh, taught in school education so much. So uh, the younger generations are completely ignorant uh, about most of the history, while when you come to uh, Philippines, uh, Indonesia, and Singapore, and you go to History Museum, there is always a section that Japan colonized two, three years of most of the Southeast Asian countries. So when you first encounter those uh, diorama, it's quite shocking if you don't know anything. But uh, so I think even including this uh, comfort women issue, that has to be start from a, a history lesson and uh, like a learning. 
and then uh, it's as taking it as a fact and then we have to start dialogue how to develop how to go for the future so uh, I'm happy to talk about these uh, issues but how to do it within the museum section and I don't want to be deliberate as a museum I want the museum to be a platform for people can talk openly those issues so I wanted to look at the history and all those complicated issue always through uh, artist lens and an artist practice so taking artist uh, practices and see what they are trying to say and uh, that is the starting point of the learning and uh, more to be done. Thank you. Um, I think Billy had something to add. Um, yeah, actually, the, so it was a, a very recent experience uh, with the Hugo Boss uh, Asia Awards. It was uh, one of the presentations uh, by the Beijing-based artist Hao Jinban. Uh, she wanted to engage with the, the early history of cinema in China, which was actually very transnational and it's intimately tied to conflict. So actually, uh, in, so it's, it's kind of, she was wanted to address the, the film studios and the emergence and the evolution of uh, how cinema portrayed Manchuria uh, or Dongbei in China. Um, but through censorship, actually also is, uh, we're also not allowed to say Manchuria. So this has, there is this amnesia that's very deliberate. Um, and so there's a very big dilemma for us. It's like, you know, but still, this is, the, and yet this is the, you could argue, a very formative uh, uh, condition that influenced the evolution of image making and, and our relationship to that. Um, so we still decided to show that work. So, but there was this very complex dilemma of how we can't say in Manchuria, but we have to sort of, uh, we, but, we, we, but we decided to do the projects about Manchuria. Um, so this is this different ways to sort of work in to circumnavigate uh, a, a system or structure, um, but the I mean for me for my position I would say uh, simply the gesture of, of to not uh, self censor and to avoid the question and we just try it first uh, to put that out to sort of push a dialogue between the artist and our institution that's already in some ways a success or part of the reason why we we want to work and do the exhibitions that we do so. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's, it's this, this kind of cat and mouse game, I would say, um, at the moment for us. Um, but also, I wanted to sort of r raise that example as it happens in, yeah, in lots of different, both ways, basically. Yeah. Thank you, Billy. Um, I think that uh, it's, it's always quite tempting to uh, conflate institutions with uh, national identity in the sense when we have uh, speakers that are from different countries to see in a way like uh, Mami represents Mori Art Museum, Mori Art Museum represents Japan so, and so on. <laughs> yeah, so um, I do want to also just like highlight a little bit the complexity of uh, what's going on um, both just looking at transnational politics and also the fact that even as we ask for um, these insights that there are as uh, Ruben pointed out, sometimes there are very complex domestic politics going on as well that feed into different contexts of interpretation for the art that is being shown and the discourse and agendas that are being put on the table. Um, if we could have another, the next question. Is there a question from there? Hi, I'm Lisa Movius from the Art Newspaper, and I'm based in Shanghai. So I've seen over the years everything that Rock Bun has done to uh, bring in artists and perspectives from um, regions that are not so represented otherwise in, within mainland China. Um, I get the feeling from seeing shows here as well as what shows in China that Southeast Asia, for various reasons, is very, very interested in China, but that China doesn't really reciprocate the interest all that much. And there's probably a lot of you know, power and history and economic reasons behind that. Um, and so 
the shows of Southeast Asia that we see in China are primarily the ones that rock bund. I'm curious what kind of reactions you end up seeing from audiences and how much repackaging you have to do for Chinese audiences, especially given Southeast Asians' arts interest in things like colonization and religion and identity and, of course, politics, which usually tend to be avoided within China. And also for the other panelists, how um, your regions and your audiences interact with the topics that are so popular with artists here. So I'm just trying to think. So, uh, I mean, I, I mentioned before that uh, I think with the Hugo Boss Asia Award, that's such a relatively, I mean, in, in, I mean, there is that idea of uh, something that we've been trying to think about a lot more now is um, somehow the, there is these art centers that are function as a horizon and reference point that we try to challenge now and, and decenter in different ways. Um, so not just us, but for example, in Times Museum in Guangzhou, uh, they've now sort of uh, deliberately have sort of um, structured their strategy uh, and program to uh, focus more now on South-South narrative as a kind of resistance or a way to sort of um, produce diversity and difference in, 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 in a situation that's becoming a bit more uh, slightly homogenous uh, with the influx of a lot of uh, artists from the West uh, into institutions. Um, in terms of reactions, uh, we're, although in statistically I think they, it's still an ongoing process, um, we're, like for example last year uh, the, the symposium that we had were invited lots of, um, it was a way to connect uh, exhibition histories in the 90s in China with Southeast Asia. Uh, this was very well attended, I would say. Um, and there is this, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, this is a very big excitement for, for this aspect. It's just a bit of a dilemma for us in terms of our, you know, with our, even with our own history and the constraints that we have and, and the capacity that we have as a relatively smaller institution that doesn't have the resource of a collection, um, we have to be a bit strategic. So it's, 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 it's something that we're, um, yeah, trying to uh, foster through different ways and to cultivate. Um, so, yeah, I would say it's not like, um, yeah, Thank you. Um, okay, if I could move on to one final, is there another question? Okay, let's. Is this on? Oh, hi. Um, so my question is about. Um, uh, would you introduce yourself? Oh, first? I'm Leanne okay. Hong. Uh -huh. I'm an art lover. <laughs> um, Thank you for being here. I mean, given that the three of you come from countries that are much larger and have a much longer history um, than Southeast Asia, which is really a collection of many different countries with different colonial pasts. Um, what's interesting to me about Southeast Asian art is that many different countries with different colonial histories, plus at the moment they're all um, countries that are growing and developing at different rates. So when artists try to interpret the world, it's happening, you know, there's a real diversity is, is what is exciting to me. So my question is, over the next 10 years, for you, what in an ideal world would be the most exciting vision for Southeast Asian art from your perspectives that you would see from this region? Um, maybe I can ask Ruben to take that question, if that's okay. Now I, s now I see how difficult it was for Billy to answer my question about the future. Um, look, uh, uh, to, to your first point, I suppose, about um, colonialism, um, and I think that's, look, there is something that Australia shares in common uh, with, with, with Southeast Asia in that there is this colonial history. It manifests very differently. We're a settler colonial nation, um, and, uh, you know, a good part of... Uh, of Southeast Asia is, um, you know, post-colonial or on its way to becoming post-colonial. I would really 
um, doubt that any society in the world is properly post-colonial. I would say kind of the greatest imperative is to actually bring a properly post-colonial situation into being, but that's, that's for another time. Um, but I, I, I do think that there's, um, there's in, uh, in looking at these colonial histories, maybe, you know, going back to what um, Mami was saying, it, it does provide these kind of points of, of commonality uh, and, and understanding. And I guess I'm not saying that the uh, artist should focus on a particular topic, um, these kind of particular hi historical topics, but I know that artists are interested in these things. And they'll manifest differently. They won't just manifest at the level of subject matter, they'll manifest uh, in terms of forms, in terms of materials, in terms of gestures, and this kind of real uh, diversity of, of means. Um, for me, I want to amplify artist to artist dialogue. Um, and that's, that's something that I actually have some agency within my, my position to do. The sharing of knowledges, um, this sharing of different subject and, and, uh, and identification positions, um, sharing of methodologies uh, so that um, we can, you know, form an ever richer understanding not just of artistic practice but of, of the societies that we live in and, and not just the, you know, the hard sort of historical facts but the everyday life of, of these places and uh, the histories of the, the many diverse communities um, that actually sort of exist there. So that would be, that's what I would like to see and what I would uh, try to attempt to achieve in my position. Yeah. Thank you. I, want to, I, I also wanted to comment a little bit because thinking about next 10 years, for sure these uh, Southeast Asian countries will grow and then also more population and uh, while Japan is already declining. And, uh, but something important is, for me, contemporary art is a way to understand the world and how this world is structured, how it has been made, and how all of us are related. So it's really important for all of us to understand where we are in a larger context, historically and also ge geographically. So uh, in the next 10 years, I'd like to see uh, Southeast Asia to be liberated from Southeast Asia and uh, start finding all other relationships with all other parts of the world. But also uh, responding to what uh, Billy said about uh, the people still looking at uh, Western, Western gaze, the, the contemporary art through Western gaze. But I think uh, to me it's, it's changing already that uh, Asian, Asia Pacific is more trying to see us from our own lens and also the history. So uh, I think we should all work together to see where we are and where each of us are and uh, from the larger context. So instead of uh, all these new biennales, new museums and new fairs becoming competitive, I really would like to work together uh, as a collective to see how we can do together to contribute for our society. And uh, I think uh, you have a potential to grow more audience in this region for the contemporary art. And uh, that takes time. But I think uh, to have this next 10 years as uh, one vision to grow together as a larger region would be fantastic. Thank you. Um, we're running out of time, so I think I'm going to uh, close with one last quick question. Um, it's maybe a little bit tricky, so but I'm just going to ask like, the three curators here, you've seen a lot of works, you've seen a lot of artists, and if you could put some cards on the table, if we could just maybe very quickly talk about maybe just one or two artists whose practice you're currently very excited about. Uh, yeah, because I think we've spoken really broadly and generally and um, it's always nice to have something to hold on to. Um, yeah. Should I just go around either way? I just bump into Ilan at the entrance of a uh, fair and I think something that we couldn't really tackle in Sanshawa show is relationship with uh, contemporary art practice 
and uh, folk, so-called folk art or handwork or crafts that's really coming on the surface to see what has been sided uh, from the concept of fine art from a Western lens. But the idea of uh, crafts is so much embedded in this society and culture. And then I love handworks. So uh, yeah, you should, if you haven't seen it, you should really look at what Ilan did with the local community. Thank you. Okay, um, I mean, picking a f favorite artist is like picking your favorite child. Not a favorite artist, but just someone. So someone who's exciting. Okay, I mean, uh, so okay, let's just keep on the Saba thing because uh, I worked with uh, Pangrok Sulap uh, a Collective from Ranao uh, for the the last Asia Pacific Triennial, um, and I'm going to be visiting uh, KK in a, a few days, um, which I'm excited about, but. Um, what was interesting there is looking at this kind of uh, re-emergence of a, uh, a collective or community-based um, activity that's not necessarily individualistic um, and one that doesn't necessarily operate um, within the art world. And I think one of the things that excites me is watching artists organizing. Uh, uh, artists organizing their own spaces, their own initiatives, um, constructing their framework that they actually operate in and um, I've been you know very uh, excited to see the the growth in artist run spaces in Singapore uh, the last couple of times I visited um, uh, Coda Culture have a big opening I think it's, it's is it last night tonight um, uh, softball studs great projects uh, super normal uh, you know a whole whole range of, of spaces that are springing up people doing it for themselves, uh, constructing their own networks and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, doing things. That really excites me. I think to go back to the kind of... Uh, about representing a big country. Um, for example, um, my, my, my own background is uh, Chinese Vietnamese. Uh, my mom and dad were refugees and I grew up in London. So it's really... This, so, I mean, in 10 years, I would hope that, um, you know, that this isn't a question of like one kind of homogeneous kind of identity and representation in an institution. And it's much more diverse for lots of different subjectivities. Um, and so I had a lot of affinities with uh, Shibiki Rao. Uh, we talked for four hours yesterday, it was really amazing, where I tried not actually to talk about her work and have that kind of transactional one hour sort of meeting. Um, but it's also really interesting for her is that um, the challenges that she's facing. So she's uh, now curating the Kochi Biennale, <laughs> um, and you know, it's really to put her ongoing projects on pause for uh, a kind of wider, I mean, an immediate challenge, uh, and to to face that as uh, I think is really uh, quite impressive and 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 and, and, and admirable. Uh, but also how she was talking about the long game as well. So there might be some injustice or inequalities that we're sort of situated within. Uh, but she was speaking about a nominality. So there's a lot of other kind of covert ways to, to, to kind of um, change the system somehow. So I found that very inspirational. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Mommy, Ruben, and Billy for taking time, uh, coming all the way to Singapore to share uh, your thoughts with us on uh, such a range of topics. And also, of course, thank you to the audience for taking time on Saturday afternoon uh, with the rain and all to, <laughs> to come and join us for this conversation.